So here's an example. <clears throat> clear quality beef. Uh, clearly the best. Uh, that's the slogan for uh, our branded product uh, on our family farm. And it's wholesome beef raised in the heart of cattle country on the family ranch in Madisonville, Texas. And our goal is to raise two boys, and there's Kendall right there in that picture with his Aggie hat on, and we, brand, we uh, brainwash them early in our household. And uh, that's my son, and, and, and again, we're going to raise two boys and wholesome beef on the family ranch. And it's great beef straight from the ranch to the dinner table, just like our family like it, likes it, just like I would feed my two boys. Now again, I don't have this branded beef product. Uh, I made this up, but if you were sitting on the other side of the counter, if you read this on a website of our ranch and you were looking for a product or beef to buy, is that appealing to you? Does that kind of have a, a feel-good mentality behind it? And the answer is yes. It has more story behind it. Now, would that be the average ranch here in the United States? Yeah, it really would be. Because as ranchers in traditional marketing, we're doing the same thing. We're raising beef, we're using production practices to do it. We're doing it to make sure we protect the welfare and the safety of the animal and the health of the animal. We're also doing it because we realize that even though we're producing cattle, we are in the food business and we're going to produce the same beef that we're producing. We're also going to turn around and our family's going to eat that beef as well. So again, maybe that's a little bit of a niche market in this slide but it is just like another family that's maybe raising a thousand cows or two thousand cows on a day on a yearly basis and so it's about telling a story uh, perception versus reality perceptions based on emotion and realities based on science uh, today's consumers if we look at them today do they differentiate between the two uh, and that's a challenge that we face uh, in uh, in universities and science um, science appeals to our rational uh, brain, but our beliefs are motivated, motivated by, largely by emotion. Uh, and the biggest motivation is remaining tight with our peers. So it's the feel good. It's the movie star that's eating it. It's the popular chef on TV that says that we ought to have naturally or organic or humanely uh, locally grown. Uh, it's those things we try to uh, uh, appeal with or be like those people and so we want that same kind of food there. And that's where the emotion comes in. So the story is, and the thing that I want you to have an understanding before we get into those types of products, because uh, I am a scientist, I am uh, trained by this university and another university, and uh, as scientists we have to look at the information at hand. We look at the scientific data, the trials, and then we make our decisions for recommendations to pursue producers or consumers based on the scientific evidence that's presented. Now, many of the organic, natural, grass-fed products, they claim nutritional or wholesomeness or superiority over conventional beef. However, science-based, peer-reviewed, nutrition research reviews do not support such claims. Uh, you've got to compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges in, in, in these, these studies. And so again, the science doesn't support that these uh, organic and natural are superior to what conventional uh, production agriculture is. And so this is just an example of an article uh, in a journal of animal science uh, looking at genetically engineered or uh, GMOs, okay, or gen uh, GE foods. Uh, numerous experiments and studies consistently revealed that the performance and health of uh, genetically modified or enhanced animals are comparable with those fed non-genetically uh, enhanced crop lines. Okay? Over 100 billion animals have been uh, followed in these particular studies in this review. And there's no differences in there. Okay? This is the science. The science says that genetically modified or genetically engineered uh, foods are safe to eat. Now, is there a public concern out there? And are there some people that say that they're going to be the end of the world? And the answer is yes. But the science says that they're safe and a good portion of our foods come from this. 